What's going on smart people? Today I'm bringing you another coding video and I realized that I'm starting to have a relatively exhaustive list of videos that should be helpful to physics majors who want to learn how to do some programming in Python. But one thing that I don't have yet is just how to do something simple like reading and writing to a file. And that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to show you two different ways of doing this. The first of which is using the library CPickle. You can use Pickle, but CPickle is objectively faster because it's written in C. Um, and this is really helpful if all of the input and output data is really self-contained. Like maybe you have a Python script that is making the data for you, and then you need to import it and read it from another file or something like that. Um, but if it's not, like say you're just reading something from some random tech file and you need to import it into your Python code, there's probably ways of doing that in, in uh, using the pickle library, but if, since it's not serialized, I think it would be a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to show you how to do that without using pickle, which will be a little bit more involved. Again, there's probably better ways of doing that because most of the coding that I do, I'm making the data in a Python code and then I'm reading it in from another thing. So pickle is what I'm most used to using. So be sure to like check the comment section for other people's recommendations for the second part of this video. But let's go ahead and get started. Now for this, as you can see, I have three tabs open. One, and both of them are untitled. One is going to be for making the data, and then the other one is going to be for reading that data that we make. Uh, so the first thing that we're gonna do is, here I have the libraries that I imported, import cpickle as pk. And then just in case we wanna work with like arrays or something like that, I imported numpy, it's always safe. In the second tab, same thing, numpy and pickle. I want my, just in case we want to plot some stuff out, I'm going to be using matplotlib that's going to be in the screen. But let's get started. Let's say we have some data. Let's say that we're working with like a dictionary or something like that that corresponds to like a certain student or something. So we can say student, say student1 is equal to some dictionary. So we can have it be like name uh, Andrew, comma, let's do say age 22 and GPA oops, let's say 3.5 okay and this is our data this is our sample data set that we want to write to a file so that other people can open it later the way that we go about doing this is we write the following command so we do pk dot <laughs> pk dot dump so pickle dump and then this is going to take two arguments, the first of which is the data that we want to write to a file, which is going to be our student1 dictionary. And then the second argument is going to be telling it what to do with it. So we're going to need to open a file to write that to, and we're going to have to say that we're writing it to that file. So here we're going to have open, and we need a file name. We can call this, I don't know, student.p. It doesn't really matter. I don't think it matters what your uh, extension is because it's serializing it anyways, um, but don't take my word for that. Like if you were to write .text or .tech or whatever, it'll still work exactly the same. Um, and then we're going to say that we want to write this in binary. Okay, and if we, run, if we run this code, so we take a look at my homepage, we'll see that there is no uh, .p file for student, I don't think anyways, nope. So if we run this, run and then we check this home page now we see that there's now a student.p file we can click on it we see that there's like the unicode or whatever that is uh, that corresponds to this file and now we want to look at it in a different file so the way that we do that we need to create a variable name so let's call this uh, my student is equal to and now we need to load this data so pk.load and then pretty much the exact same thing, except for we're going to be reading this file. So pk.load, open. What file are we opening? Did that say open? Open. We're opening the file student.p. And we want to read this in. Read this, rb. OK. And if we just call this, say, my student, what's going to happen? If we call this, we get we get something that looks like a dictionary of what we uh, of what our data is. But is it a dictionary? Or could it just be reading in something as a string or something like that? Well, spoiler alert, I mean, we're not seeing any uh, apostrophes at the end of that curly bracket, so it's probably not. But we can check the type to make sure. Type of my student. 
and we see that, uh, that it preserved it being a dictionary. It didn't convert it to anything else. So that tells you that this new thing, my student, can be used exactly how you would use any other dictionary. You can check what the name of this student is. And I'll tell you uh, that it's Andrew. Uh, this should be square brackets, my bad. Okay, let's just say uh, name. There we go, Andrew, perfect. And this can be used, this whole pickle dump, pickle load can be used for many different types of objects or data types. Like you can do it for arrays or strings. Uh, and it's a little bit, it looks a little bit weird because it's, it's weird looking at this and being like, this is a dictionary. But uh, this part here is a file that's being read and then it's loading it as the dictionary. So if we were to create some other type of thing, like say, um, let's say data is equal to np.linspace zero to two times np.py um, and let's have a hundred points and we want to um, dump this data it's going to overwrite the file that we already have uh, so let's do that and then here instead we're going to load the exact same thing so my student and there we have an array and we can use this array like we would any other array. We could say, for example, we have some function. Actually, we don't even since it's an array, we don't even have to define a function for this. We can just say like y is equal to np dot sign of my student, and then maybe plot this out. Plt dot plot my student comma y comma maybe red dots. Throw in a couple grid lines. And then let's take a look at what this looks like. Okay, and just like that, we uh, we see that we can import an array of stuff and read it and use it. So that's pretty useful. Um, again, like I said, this is awesome if all of your data and is, is super self-contained. Like you'll notice that I had to export all of this data as the .p. I had to pickle dump it, and this serializes the data. And then we read it in by un unserializing it, I suppose, to make it back or to turn it back into the, our specific objects and data types. So the next thing that I'm going to get into is what happens if you don't necessarily start with something that's already been pickled. So for example, down here, I created a sample text file, which you can make for yourself if you just say right click on your desktop, go down to new, and then you should be able to create like a text file. And I just wrote one, two, three, four, 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 all, all the way to ten, and then I uploaded that text file using this. So you upload, and then you just bring it to Jupyter, just because this is like on the web. I needed to upload it. So we have this sample text file, which was not created using Pickle. I didn't dump any data into this. So next, we're going to be going over how to do stuff with this data without using Pickle. All right, so if we want to be able to read in this random data, maybe you had an oscilloscope save some data to like a text file. Regardless, Pickle didn't dump it here. Then what I like to use is just the regular open function and then just do stuff to it. I'm sure there might be ways to, you know, do stuff where you can still use Pickle. I don't know how to do it. That's what the comment section is for. But I'm going to create a variable name for this file that I'm going to call f. And that's going to be equal to open the name of this file, which is sample.txt. Okay, so this is going to be type file. It's not going to be a string or anything. But if we do f.read, we read in the data, what do we get? We get, all right, so not only are there these, these ends here, which uh, signify that we're doing a new line. So it's one, new line, two, new line. So not only that, but it's taking this whole thing to be a string instead of saying one is an integer, which is kind of annoying. But we can get, we can kill two birds with one stone here. One, we're going to be able to turn this whole thing into a list, and we'll be able to get rid of those new line commands with one thing. So let's let's create a variable for this, a equals uh, f dot read, and we're going to say a dot split. And let's see what that does. When we do that, well, it turns the whole thing into a list, it gets rid of the new line, and, uh, but one of the consequences is now each element of the list is still a string. So the next thing that we need to do, let's call this B now, um, is we need to change each element of this list to an integer. So let's create a list to store our new integer list. And we're going to create a for loop 
that accesses each member of this list b, which has these string elements, changes them into an integer, and then adds them to this new list c. So we can say for i in range, the length of b, oops, I want to append, so c dot append b i. Well, not actually, no, sorry, not that. I want the integer version of this, the int version of this, okay? And then now let's see what happens if we just call C. Now, each element of the list is an integer, so that's awesome. Um, now, this was, this was kind of, I think, the more annoying version because we had, like, those new line things. Say, for example, instead of... Uh, multiple columns, we had everything on the same row, then it's actually way easier, or not really, you still have to do the same step, but it looks easier, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then save this, and then do the same thing where um, we want to read what this looks like, and run it, oh, I didn't actually call it A, let's actually get rid of this, I guess I have this still open, get rid of that new line, run this one more time. Now it already has something that looks a little bit nicer because it doesn't have like the, the new line commands everywhere, but it's still, a, uh, it's still a string, you know what I mean? But you can take care of this the exact same way where it's still a dot split, in which case now every element is still a string, every element of this list is still a string, and you go through the exact same thing. So you gotta walk through a few hoops few loops, whatever the saying is, to be able to make this data a little bit usable, but it's still pretty straightforward, I think. But anyways, I hope you guys found this helpful. I still am more used to using pickle because like I said, all my data comes from like pickle dumps, pickle loads. Uh, but if you can't, but if you can't use that, I think this works. You know, it, it might not be the most efficient way, which like I said, is what the comment section is for. So if you have, you know, suggestions on a better way to do this, let people know in the comment section and I'll see you guys there.